Hi everyone, Andy Oliver here for the Fan Carpet in London's West End, the Dominion Theatre for the press night of Jim Steinman's Bat Out of Hell. I'm off to speak to some of the celebrities and stars as they arrive here on the red carpet tonight. First of all, I want to ask you, this uh, it must be a proud feeling to see this take stage at last, but with the talent that you've got on the stage as well, it's quite overwhelming, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you know, we've been um, we've been working on it basically for like over a year, and um, it's beyond thrilling. I mean, these guys are like at the top of their game. Yeah, they are, aren't they? I mean, these are seasoned. Although they're a young age, they've got that something about them already, haven't they? They seem to have a lot of wealth of experience already. Yeah, yeah. These guys, they come out and they eat the stage, literally. <laughs> How did you go about auditioning? Was it was it a big process? A long process? Yeah, super long process. Um, we spent. Uh, um, I want to say we spent maybe two or three months. We saw, I don't know, thousands of people, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it came down under and just a few others that you thought, wow, they've, they've got something extra. Yeah, you know, it's like, um, you know, looking for people who have a little bit of a criminal glint in their eye and they can hit all the notes and charm your socks off. <laughs> That's it, isn't it? This show is all about the notes, isn't it? Because some of these songs are probably some of the highest ranges for rock songs especially, aren't they? Yeah, the range, the range itself, these are, these are like super athletes, right? I mean, they're, vocally, the range is so massive. It's like, it's like doing a Wagner opera. <laughs> I've actually been speaking to a few uh, personality celebrities here tonight, and we've been talking about that. You've got to be kind of fit. You've got to be in the right mentality, but you've got to be very, very fit mentally and physically to do a show like this, which some people don't actually realize until they see it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, um, it's a super physical practice, and we train every day, which is really key. You know, like, no one takes a day off. We train every day, every day. And that's a big part of it, yeah. That way we can jump through walls, you know what I mean? <laughs> and get up and do another three shows the next day. And hit the high note. <laughs> that's the most difficult thing. Well, it's a, it's a wonderful show, isn't it? It's, it's, it's an assault on the senses, isn't it? Um, now, how did you become involved in this musical, first of all? David Sonnenberg called me and asked me, and then I met with him and Jim Steinman, and then I called Tony, and then we all got together. And you put together such a... But very young talent, but very wonderful talent in this show. Except for the mother and father. They're never going to grow any older. They're frozen. But you know, we're very lucky. There's some great singers. We're very lucky with, with, our, with our casting. We've got some fantastic singers. I mean, I've spoken to a few people tonight about the fact that you don't necessarily have to be a rock fan to enjoy this show, and you don't necessarily have to be a fan of that kind of era's music, do you? Because it stands alone. You just have to love great songs and a good story. Yeah, yeah. And a few yeah, tricks a, here and there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a great piece of entertainment and it, it, for everyone. Not just, not just for the rock fans, for everyone. Yeah. I've been talking to the director and the producers about the physical and mental aspects of performing a show like this. And you've just done one and then come here. How do you do it? Because <laughs> it's so bad. I'm, like, I'm pretty exhausted right now because the energy on that stage tonight, I mean every night, but tonight especially, like... The audience just gave so much that made us go harder. So, um, yeah, I think I'm ready for bed, actually. <laughs> I, I see it myself as you probably go to bed and still have those words and moves and everything moving around in your head. Not personally for me, I just switch right off, mate. You know what I mean? <laughs> I go into autopilot when I do these shows, you know what I mean? So it's just like, with the love and the feedback, that's it. That's all you need. What was it like? I mean, that must you just about that atmosphere. Audiences can drive you on, can't they? Absolutely. But you can't get carried away, because if you get carried away, you lose track yes. and you mess up. So you just centre, breathe and enjoy. I always say if you get too comfortable, you, you fall on your... Yeah, you will. Yeah, you'll fall over. Yeah, which happens if you do accidentally go into autopilot, you do end up fluffing a line or so you've just always got to be in the moment, which helps because it's like the first time you've done it every night. So This is iconic music. What's it been like to bring that music to life on the stage? 40 years old now, you know, uh, one of the best selling, well, best rock albums of all time? Yes. Well, you know what? I discovered this album quite late. But singing it, I've been able to connect with my own personal experiences. So it's enabled me to like sing these songs from a truthful place. And so I fell in love with the album that way, you know. And, uh, yeah. You know. Every single song takes
tells a story. So it's nice to actually act them out and live them every night. It's just beautiful. The words are stunning. So we just really feel it. And it's just an honour to be able to perform these songs every night. I've just been speaking to some of your compatriots there and they've just been telling me about the atmosphere tonight in the theatre. It was extra special, I believe. Yeah, it was incredible. There was, we had so many of the really diehard fans in tonight and they're just awesome. They come see the show, you know, some of them a couple of times a week and yeah. they, they're they just amazing. They just bring such a lift to the show every time they come in. And they also, they've kind of learned the points where to kind of go back and then when to go forward again. And it, it just, it really, you know, kind of guides the rest of the audience. It's, it's that type of show, isn't it? It's that type of show that gains a following. I think it's not the same as Rocky Horror, but it can be a little bit because people follow it and people know the lines and people want to come and see it again because it's so iconic, the music, isn't it? Yeah. People love Andrew's um, opening speech at the beginning and people talk along to that speech all the time. I think it's because, like you say, they're Jim's words and people have grown over the decades. They've listened to the album hundreds of times. They know exactly what Andrew's going to say so they and they really want to get involved with it as well because it's their first opportunity to, really. And what about your characters? Tell us a bit more about your characters and what particularly resonated with you when you first saw it on that script in that lib sort of thing? Um, well I play Blake which is, uh, he's a member of the Lost and he is one of Strat's close friends and um, he's kind of the, the I guess he's the more sensitive kind of more um, emotional of, of all of the Lost. He kind of shows that side and he's kind of the more you know tender so there's lots of problems and there's lots of issues that are uh, that um, occur in the, in the piece and he's kind of the most sensitive to them and he's more gentle than, than some of the other characters which which some of the other characters are which is it's nice it's different what about you uh, I play Tink he's a really just a little naive 14 year old confused sexually frustrated boy who's in love with Strat and he idolizes him in like a brother slash boyfriend kind of way and he always means his best but he ends up you know ruining everything and you know without giving too much away um, and yeah he's just so naive and angry and frustrated Frustrated and I mean, this is a very powerful music, isn't it? It's it's got certain messages, but it takes you on a journey like a lot of good musicals do. Yeah. By the time you get to the end of the show, like we had one particular gentleman who probably had a few too many drinks tonight, but he was right up down the front, and like he's just doing exactly what you want to do. He's just so in it, and while not everyone has to stand up and go down to the front of the stage, like everyone's feeling it the same way. Do you know what I mean? It really it just builds. All the music is so anthemic. It's, it's emotion, I think, at the end of the day, isn't it? It's and it's really loud. It's honestly one of the loudest shows I've ever been a part of and I remember in tech sitting in the audience and just hearing how loud it is and I feel like when music is that good and that loud, how can you just stay sitting in your seat? Like you have to get up. Is this the best way of well, relaxing if you can after such a great night? Cause it's some atmosphere in there tonight. Yeah, it's crazy. It's where I'm still buzzing from and it's very hard to come down after playing a house and the audience tonight were absolutely incredible, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. It's the best way to just relax now. It's just... Pour me a, pour me a gin and tonic. We've got one on the way. I've just what, what about your characters in particular? Um, when you first went into that audition, or you first saw the lab, the script, what was it about these characters that really resonated with you? Um, mine cursed a lot, and um, had amazing songs to sing, and was really strong. And I was like, oh, I love this character. So I'm Irish. That's like our second language. Do you know what I mean? But it was really. Uh, also funny, you don't get characters like that. We're really lucky, we've got characters that are like feisty strong with amazing songs to sing and then are also we get to play around and have fun, be funny. Yeah, yeah. which the crowd with the audience loves, don't they? Yeah, I mean for me it was um, to be able to create or co-create an original character. So you basically take all your repertoire and put it all together and offer it up to the director and he polishes it all off and it becomes a new character called Falco. It's not often that a musical comes along, there's a lot of classics, but this is a classic. I mean, this is something that has not been around five minutes, this is something that's been around for decades. You can even see, but I mean, it's been, they've been trying to make it for like 45 years. Jim originally wrote this as a musical, as you probably know, like four decades ago. So it's been a long time in the making, and that's why the song sits so well in the show as well, because they were written to be performed by characters. You know? tell a story, those songs, don't they? Sorry? They tell a story, very emotive, but they tell a story. The thing about Jim Steinman is, he's one of the most amazing lyricists. I mean, you can even ask um, the maestro himself, Android Webber, and he will say that Jim Steinman writes the best lyrics probably in the world. He, he takes you on four different journeys. He'll take you on the most scenic route, and then he'll take you on a just a lazy Sunday afternoon route. Yeah. 
guess the Tony Awards and all his accolades over the years, you know, really tells a lot about the man, though, doesn't it? And what he's achieved over the years as well. Yeah, absolutely. His stories are, if you listen to all of the songs in the show, they're all like mini operas. And I remember we were talking before about artists who recorded Jim's work and they would say, you know, they think they'd be finished and then the next day he'd come into the studio with another verse or with another bridge or with their, because if they don't follow, like Rob said, they take the scenic route, a lot of his pieces. They don't follow your kind of traditional formula. The fastest route on Naviga Navigon no, or whatever it's called. No. It, it, Jim is like, um, I remember um, his best friend, uh, uh, Barry Keaton, telling me one day that Jim said, if a song is not longer than six minutes, it's not a song. Yeah, yeah, these songs are. Yeah. I mean, I like mini shows. Like we've said, Paradise before is like a three act play. And then at the end of Anything for Love, just when you think it's all over, all of a sudden there's this new piece of music you've never heard before, which is done wonderfully in the show where it's myself and uh, Raven and Sahara. Uh, like the three girls get to sing these amazing. That comes from nowhere. Well, I've got to ask you about the Olivia's first. What was it like being at the Olivia's? Because I met you there on that wet Sunday a few weeks ago. What was it like? Oh, yeah, it was a really great celebration of everything that's happening in theatre right now. And we're really chuffed for all of the winners. All very deserving. Yeah, I mean, uh, being an American, I was just thrilled to go to what's, uh, I guess, one of the major award nights. So, um, you know, just to be there and celebrate the arts and culture of this wonderful country is just a pleasure. And tonight, um, you get performances and audiences. But I gather it feels like tonight's been something just that little bit extra for some reason. How did you find it? It was out of this world. We have amazing fans who are so supportive of what we do. And tonight there felt like there was some magic in the air. What about you, Anne? I, it just felt like there was a lot of love in the air. Uh, I think what's so wonderful about Jim Simon and Meet Love Music is that they're so focused on um, sharing the ecstasies of life. And it really, really felt like all those people who love this music as much as we do came to see the show tonight, so we're grateful. They do, they follow the show, don't they? They don't, they don't just see it here, they they go to see it on tours, and they're very, very fearful to the music, aren't they? Yeah, we had people travelling all the way to Canada from the UK almost every single night there was someone at Stage Door, and I guess we really appreciate that level of love and support is unbelievable. What about for you, because you, you both had a history of musicals, but you, especially in, the, in that old type fashion musical, like the good old Oklahoma show, but what's it like being in this way? It's something totally different. It's worlds away, but I think this show is worlds away from any show, not just the classical, legit musical theatre canon. It's so exciting to be something that's, be part of something that's so much bigger than ourselves. And what about you? What was the, I was going to ask you about the character of Strat, and what was the traits, the personality traits that you got from it when you first read this script? What, what jumped out with you with that character when you first saw the lib, the, the script? What first jumped out at me when I saw the script, uh, geez, almost like two and a half years ago, I got a very strong uh, Jim Morrison vibe. Uh, Jim Simon is such a huge fan of Jim Morrison. Jim Morrison uh, is at the beginning of that whole, like, uh, art rock opening the doors of perception for um, changes in the world. So, you know, it's that beginning speech that really captures the whole uh, m motion and movement of change in rock and roll and love that kind of set everyone free in that time period. I mean, it, it, the songs do take you on a journey as well as the story, don't they? They are longer than the average song in a musical, but there's a reason for that. Yeah, definitely. They're a whole story in themselves. And I think that's why they lend themselves so perfectly to the stage, and they were all originally written to be a part of that, which is so exciting to see them finally come home. Well, you're just the part for a rocker. I mean, it's... I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best. You know, you've got to put the effort in, especially when you're in a show like this, of this magnitude, and, you know, this rock and roll extravaganza. You've got to put the effort in, so, you know. And you look fantastic yourself as well. Well, I, you know, for these things, I don't often get invited to parties to be honest these, these boys as well. so these boys are a part of my band they're in we're in a band called Deviance and they came along to the show to support me this evening so just want to introduce you before we get into the yeah 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 just want you just want to say to the camera a little bit about your backgrounds and what the connections uh well we're in a hard rock band from Rice Lip which is uh You know, so we've been, you know, we've been doing this and that. We're doing gigs all over. We're doing festivals, etc., and stuff like that. Whilst, and they've put up with me. They've tolerated me whilst I've been doing all of this, yeah. all of this. You know, the shows, Bat Out of Hell, etc., and and Jesus Christ Superstar and things before that. So, um, for a 
for a man in a particular music, this type of music, playing these particular roles must be a dream, because it. You know, uh, you know it's um, it's it's been an honour. It's been truly an honour because when I was 14 years old, I had the opportunity to do Whistle Down the Wind uh, with Andrew Lloyd Webber and uh, Jim Steinman, and I met Jim Steinman. He was the most wonderful man, m m most wonderful man ever, and. Um, to, to sing his music, to sing his material every single night on stage it, with, with such a set behind us, with such a cast behind us, uh, it, it, it's, it's unrivaled really, it's, um, it's so wonderful to do and rock and roll is yeah, I mean, unbelievable. Shaw's now have come a long way, I mean last 20, 30 years, the production values, a little bit like what certain television programmes like Game of Thrones and all this, the production values that go together to make a spectacle have gone through the roof haven't they? You, you, you know, I, I, I think you appropriate it, don't you? I think, you know, if, if, there's a, if there's a show that doesn't need a massive budget, then you, you kind of work with what you've got and you invest in the actors and you do whatever you've got here. With this show, they've invested financially, they've invested in the actors, they've invested in the music, they've done everything. The songs were written for a stage show, weren't they? Like, it's, it's a rock album, but... It is a stage show, isn't it? And they've finally been able to do it in the West End and in Canada and in Manchester. The and, and the it, imagery and everything like that. You know, it's, it's kind of... It just, it's been brought to life now. It's, um... Yeah, it's, it, you know, it's, it's been a true pleasure to conceive the role as well, because I've been with it for 14 months now. And, um... The, the costs are just outrageous, just just outrageous. The energy this evening and every every night is incredible. I mean, it is. It's about it's about a mental journey to go on during a performance, but physical as well because you you're putting a lot into there. Obviously the vocal cords and you, you come into this afterwards. I mean, what are you doing? What are you? Oh my god! No, no, it's uh, it's one of those things. You just look after yourself. You you know I I work out you know and I look after my voice and um, and then I have to go and play with these guys at the weekend, which is absolutely bananas. So it's all of those it's all of those things put together. But I think it's also as well like he, in here in here as well. There's such a drive and such a passion to make sure that this hits home every single night, and it's amazing. And um, because as I said, I am an original cast member and it means so much to me being a part of the original cast to make sure that all of y'all come back. Y'all here? Have we come down after that yet? Uh, well. Still on a high. Absolutely still on a high. It's amazing. It was incredible. Oh my god, those songs. And I didn't know that Celine Dion song was in it. The, We're talking uh, about the... Um the adrenaline and the sort of like how fit you have to be to do a show like that. I just think I, I just I I want to be Danielle Sears. I I, I want I to be her. She's gonna she breaks a lot of hearts. That girl yeah. does her voice. Well, all I, her voices. I wanted to touch on your next project. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because we didn't get that last time. So um, I'm doing the rink at Southwark Playhouse, and Fabian is the choreographer. Um, we're really excited. Um, it's a show set in Coney Island in the 70s. There's going to be roller skating, obviously. Um, Caroline O'Connor is playing my mum, so she's playing Anna, and I'm playing Angel. Um, and it's a story about family and forgiveness and two women who are both adults sort of coming back together after a sort of tumultuous sort of parent. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a really great show. It's a Kander and Ebb show, so Chicago and Cabaret. Um, and we can't wait. It's not been done in London for 30 years, so we're very, very, very excited. So as a choreographer, are you watching this show with the choreographer head on. No, I'm watching this show. I could relax. I could relax and just enjoy it and just let it kind of overtake you the way it does because it's just brilliant. The music is just... I think it does, doesn't it? We can go in and... It's kind of like going to the cinema. We can leave the troubles behind in the door and leave it behind. It's a nice go down. It's we were just saying, isn't it? we get there and you know all these cynical people walk into a room and then get absolutely overwhelmed by this incredible show. It's, it's fantastic. It's so sexy as well. Like, it's <laughs> Rock is, isn't it? Isn't it? You're absolutely right. Fossy is, but Rock is as well. Exactly. The two very different types, but yeah, brilliant. We were really living good. out all our fantasies. <laughs> we really were. What did we think of that? It's amazing. Wow. It's going to start. Do you know, I, I am absolutely, and we are massive musical fans, so we go to the whole caboche, but I'm blown away by the production and the choreography. I just think that was off the scale.
well. What it did you looks think? incredible. It looks, it's a spectacle. Yeah. I'll give you that. And the music, I mean, obviously the very last number was the best <laughs> one. Um, <laughs> it looks amazing. And obviously they've worked so hard on it. Uh, it's, it's a show. Theatre has come a long way because years ago we got the Theatre and Theatre production, but now we go and we see special effects, we see big <laughs> production oh, values. Stage. A car fell off the stage into the pit and I was like... Did you not okay. watch it? I'm, I was watching the choreography thinking, do you know what? I'd love to be part of that crew. <laughs> they were having such good fun. I can't move like that anymore. And they can eat and drink anything they like. They've burnt <laughs> off so many calories. They were just... You, see, you were working while you were watching the show. That's what we do, don't we? <laughs> oh, they were so good. They were so, so good. All, the entire cast were incredible. I don't know how they kept their energy up. It's, and it's quite warm in there. And I can see them all sweating. As a theatre performer myself, it is... You're knackered when you come off, you're tired when you come off, but adrenaline is, you know, adrenaline takes it. It must feel like a workout, right? It must be like a workout but two or three times a day. not going to come down until the early hours of the morning, are they? They, they are firing. You go to bed and you literally have words and songs going around your head. Yeah. What's your view? What was it like? <laughs> it was... Uh, Incredible in so many ways. I mean, it was like a big, amazing assault on the audience, uh, really. It's just like, it's so in your face, it's so out there, it's so colourful and amazing and massive and shocking and brilliant. I mean, it was, it really engaged me. I was really, uh, I was really, really entertained. I think that's the best, the best word to describe it, really. It's a fantastic show. How would you describe it to an audience then, in, say, a sentence who are going to go and see it? Maybe you're the audience who we're not really familiar with that heavy rock sound. Uh, keep an open mind because the songs, I mean, you forget how many amazing songs there are. The saw, the vocals on that stage, the talent on that stage is completely phenomenal. I mean, it's worth going just to listen to the singing. Never mind see the set or, you know, the beautiful choreography or, you know, the, the it's just brilliant in so many ways, you know, uh, a massive treat for me. Definitely. Well, that's all from me, Andy Oliver, here for the fan carpet. Remember to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. It's a bit of a party. We'll see you next time. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.